Week 13 in the 2018 college football season is here. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to BB&T Field in rainy Winston-Salem, North Carolina, for the last week of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons 2018 season. Although the Demon Deacons blew their chance in the ACC and Atlantic Conference standings by losing to Maryland, by losing to Syracuse, by losing to Clemson, there's still hope for an eight-win season and a very good chance at a very decent bowl game. The Deacons have locked up their third consecutive bowl game already, barring their seventh win for a while now, but there's only one game left, and it's against Duke. So, do you bleed blue or bleed gold? That's the question everyone's asking. Well, for Dustin Thomas, for Wayne Haynes, for Matt Burns, for Ryan Caldwell, they bleed gold. Others, well, they're obviously going to bleed blue. So, without further ado, we're glad to have you here, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast. From bb t Field, let's get started. First play of the game, Curtis Hampton in quarterback for Duke. This one tossed up to his tall wide receiver, but a great play there by Eric Byers to knock it out of his hands. As he came down, it will go as an incompletion. Now, on second and five, a handoff will gain five, and it's quickly third down. Hampton, though, looking for his tight end, and Hampton will not get it. So, a very quick three now, about 30-second possession for Duke. Now it's time for Wake Forest. Dustin Thomas has the ball, and he will start the Demon Deacons game by a quarterback keeper on read option, which will net 17. So number 17 goes 17, new set of chains. Nine yards later, it's second and one. Wayne Haynes, he has now surpassed 1,600 yards on the year. Congratulations to him. He just needs one touchdown to break the school rushing season record for touchdowns of 17. We'll keep an eye on that. And if you know him like we all have all year long, there's a very, very good possibility. Back to the game. Delson Thomas to Ryan Caldwell. 12 yards there. First catch for Caldwell. Second and 10 now from about the 25-yard line. This one to Matt Burns. Shakes one. Cannot shake two, but that's okay. He's down to the three-yard line. And that sets up Wayne Haynes territory. We said he needs one touchdown to have the record all to himself in 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The new school rushing record touchdown for rushing touchdowns in a season with 18, Wayne Haynes. Give him a round of applause at home, folks. The Demon Deacons are up 7-0, and he has a record amongst others that he earned last year. 10-3 the score now. Wake Forest and Duke both tack on a field goal. Six minutes to go before halftime. Duke, they are moving the ball fluently and they are doing it frequently. They like to run no huddle, so Wake Forest, well, they have to get their breath under them and keep at Duke just as Duke keeps it going them with a fast-paced offense. First and 10, that is Jason Johnson, JJ there, down to the five-yard line and from the five, Curtis Hampton gives it off to Mark Graham, and Graham is in the end zone, tying Wayne Haynes' rushing touchdown himself, and we have a tie ball game at 10, but just before half in the clock hit zero, Adam King will knock in a 36-yard field goal, and at half, Duke is down to your Demon Deacons, 13-10. Studio update, first one of the day, Miami and Virginia, ACC Coastal, the Hurricanes, playing at home today number 24 in the nation seeds mean nothing and rankings mean nothing in college football everyone knows that virginia cavaliers up nine seven so at halftime here from bb and t field it's still raining pretty good on the field the teams will get into their locker rooms they will dry off and they will try and concoct a plan in the second half for either side for wake forest what do you do well i'd say you keep pounding the rock with Dustin Thomas and Wayne Haynes. It's worked so far. When you need a pass, you should. Third and short, maybe even third and six or seven. They have the capability of doing so. And as you see some of the highlights from the first half, you will notice that their passing plays have been amazing for both teams. For Duke, couple tight coverages. Two and three guys 
from Wake on the receivers, they still come down with it. For Wake Forest, just a little dump off passes, they can go a long way. So with the first half just about done, the halftime show just about done, sorry, the first half is done, with the second half just about to start, you see the yardage, you see the time possession, and in that highlight film, you saw Eric Byers pick the ball off from Curtis Hampton. Wake Forest did nothing, so just one turnover in the first half belongs to Duke. In the second half, we will see if Duke can come back or will Wake Forest earn their eighth victory of the year. So now second half action is underway, 30 seconds into the third quarter here, 13-10. Wake Forest won the toss, they elected to defer, so they kicked it off and they will get it this time. This is Roderick Elliott, and the reason Roderick Elliott is in this game and will remain in this game, Wayne Haynes, the Heisman leader, heading into the final week for Wake Forest. He went down with a sprained wrist, so we hope he's okay heading into the next two weeks for the offseason, and if he returns, which he probably won't because he has the NFL aspiration dream, I don't blame him. Well, it kind of sucks that he had to go out with a sprained wrist, but he did enough all year to get Wake Forest to this point, and now it will be Roderick Elliott's turn. Maybe he took a couple pages out of Ezekiel Elliott out of the Ohio State University playbook because he has been a rumble machine. You will not take him down on first contact. He has the fight in him for two and three more tries. With that said, play action to Roderick Elliott. Thomas has a man open in Caldwell, but he will go to Curtis Crosby on the short side of the field. And in the end zone, the Demon Deacons find themselves in the end zone. Touchdown. Crosby saw their great throw and run from Dustin Thomas and the Demon Deacons are up 20 to 13. Duke would add another field goal, but Wake Forest goes three and out, so now it's Duke's ball. Pause the broadcast right here. What happens during this play? Maybe we'll break it down in a future video, but for right now, you can just gasp. That is Rashad Pierce. A pick six like you have never seen before. Sorry, Lawrence Pierce. Rashad Pierce is on the Blue Devils. Lawrence Pierce, a one-handed, somehow wanted to blitz the quarterback and ended up picking it off. It's just, it's just speechless. That's all you can say. Wake Forest adds a field goal and the last offensive play you will see in this game Again, like we said, Duke, keep throwing it. You got guys that can catch it, and Dane Owen right there, he proved it. Three Demon Deacons open. Unfortunately, that was all the offense either team would see. Wake Forest, in their final game of 2018, with a little help from their defense today, this one not included, would go home winners, 30-20. to 20. Wake Forest would end the year with eight wins on the board, four losses, so they go eight and four in 13 weeks, three bye weeks, two of them coming up back to back. That will be a live video for you, ladies and gentlemen at home. That will be part of the off season, off season, excuse me. And for Wayne Haynes, we hope he has the best journey in the NFL. We wish him the best of luck. And we hope that sprained wrist is nothing serious. Just has to sit out a week or two, let it heal. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been the 2018 Wake Forest Demon Deacon season. Next year, it should be a lot of fun. I'm thinking of changing things up. Uh, let me know what you think. Maybe should I go to 15 minute quarters instead of 10? We'll find out live in the offseason version. I will see you guys there. Have a